Our next speaker is Dr. Karen Miyoto. Dr. Karen Miyoto is a clinical professor in the Department of Psychiatry and Behavioral Sciences at UCLA and the chair of the UCLA Physician Wellness Program and the UCLA Medical Staff Health Committee. She was named the 2016 recipient of the California Medical Association Gary Nye Award for Physician Health and Well-Being, and one of the 2017 recipients of the LA County Medical Association Women in Medicine Award in recognition of her advocacy and promoting the well-being of her fellow physicians. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. I'm just delighted to be here and delighted to talk about a, pa a subject that I am uh, so passionate about, and that is addressing burnout. Some of these things that other way, this way. There we go. Uh, we've certainly heard about this triple aim and why we need to go beyond enhancing patient experience and population health and reducing the cost of health care, which we know is so relevant, to the quadruple aim. We heard, how do we add a goal of improving the work life of people who provide health care? This does not mean that we're going to put a sign on UCLA Medical Center, patients come second. <laughs> Although that's an interesting book on healthcare leadership called Patient <laughs> Comes Second. And the book is really about how do we um, be better leaders in healthcare to address this goal of improving the work life balance um, of our providers. I think many of you in healthcare, um, I certainly am one who feel like this being pulled in many different directions on any particular day. Um, we've heard about these uh, Tate Shanafelt death studies, uh, who was at Mayo and now he moved to Stanford to run a big program. In fact, Tate Shanafelt is the first wellness officer, chief wellness officer at a medical center. So I, I'm hoping we'll all follow suit in all medical centers. We'll have chief wellness officers. Uh, but when you look at um, populations and physicians, people are burned out. People feel they live in a time compressed world with meeting the demands of home and work, irrespective of what workforce they're in, it's pretty common uh, in almost a quarter of individuals. One of the things we see physicians scoring quite high on this idea of work schedule not leaving enough time. I gave up on work-life balance. I just gave up. Here was work, and here was life. <laughs> And then I decided work was life. Uh, um, but what about something that I valued so much was my family life. And I think we're here today because we're concerned, and certainly our speakers are concerned, that healthcare providers sacrifice to be of service to the people that they care about. And while that's a wonderful thing, um, there's a cost, and I'm so delighted that this topic has risen to a level where we're all discussing the talk, and just applaud you for the preventive work to, to start people onboarding people with these thoughts instead of at the other end. How we define burnout is very important, and these are from uh, Christine Mashlock, really has been a leader in this field. Uh, since the 70s, she's been looking at what are the components. And although Dr. Lloyd said maybe it's like depression, and certainly working in an untenable environment can be, lead to depression, I'm very concerned because otherwise, as a psychiatrist, we'll have to give everyone that's burned out Prozac, and that'll be the end of the story. Um, and we know we don't want to go that way. So we want to drill down and look at what these items are and how do we address them. Um, and 
Dr. Mashlack has the burnout. If you're a school teacher, there's a Mashlack burnout for school teachers. Uh, if you're in leadership, so she has many different instruments that address what discipline you're in, but you see the components of exhaustion, loss of sense of accomplishment, and becoming cynical about the workplace. Now, one of the things that I've uh, heard us talk over and over about is what is the culture of medicine? Does the culture of medicine contribute to this burnout? And indeed, the culture of medicine does. Um, I signed up for service, availability, and self-sacrifice. Here I am. Um, and what's so wonderful is I think young people in medicine signed up for the same thing, but they're saying, but <laughs> I have to be healthy. I gave a talk the other day, and I said, and I'll ask you, how many of you get up each day and look forward to what you're going to do, your self-care activity that day? How many of you do? Yay! <laughs> we have a lot to learn from you. Often, often when I ask that question, hands go up, and then I say, okay, how many of you are in nursing? Or how many, and the hands all go down. Um, so um, how do we engage in activity and make it our priority? When we look at work life, it's so important to analyze the domains, because identifying burnout is one thing, but how do we develop strategies to address burnout? And that really has a lot to do with what are the domains of the, in the work life. So is it, is it work load crisis? Are our, our primary care doctors being asked to see patients at seven minutes a visit and document? Is that workload manageable? Um, and as we've heard, control is so important. Can you go to the meaningful activities in life, or do you feel you have no control? I can tell you my own personal story of burnout. I missed many of those first and last in my own children's life. And why did I miss them? Because I didn't understand. I had a sense of control. Um, and so I'm delighted that people are beginning to ask those questions. And healthcare leaders aren't saying patients come second but they're saying if we don't give our workforce greater control for those meaningful activities, that we will uh, lose our workforce, that they will be uh, burned down. In the areas of leadership, we're learning so much about the importance of leadership in medicine, because we have doctors who often say, no one appreciates what I do. Now, you would think we, had, we would have Doctors and nurses, an internal sense that we, we do good work, but there's, it goes such a long way to have your supervisor say, good job, and to feel acknowledged and recognized. And of course, if you're feeling like you're spending more time on the electronic medical record than seeing patients, then your values aren't aligned at your workplace. So we have a long way to go in medicine to improve the EMR, the electronic medical record, um, so that people can realign with their values. I feel very privileged at UCLA to be able to work on physician wellness, to be supported by leadership. Um, we spend a lot of time on the medical staff or well-being side to uh, address people in need when they are burned out, exhausted, depressed, or compromised. And we certainly um, understand for all healthcare providers, with a the license, there's stigma and shame associated with getting any kind of help. Will that impact my licensure? Um, so we have an anonymous system so we can interact with providers and refer them to the treatment they need. Um, we, um, the dean's office has supported a behavioral wellness center to address the needs of medical students when they start, get them the um, coaching, the psychological supports that they need. We've been delighted to work with uh, 
Brenda Birch, Patricia Lester, uh, Dr. Lloyd on some uh, interventions, including peer support or second victim, um, communication resources, and as Dr. Lloyd talked about, the resiliency training. So for me, my path has really been a labyrinth. I kept thinking I was stuck in a maze somewhere, and I couldn't get out with my medical career, and really have learned through incorporating the individual tools and techniques that the path keeps leading to me to reaffirm my own well-being. But my job, I'm delighted to be able to fight for system change and advocate for system change to make the world of healthcare providers better. Thank you for your attention.